Now that we have select our property method as well with the component list, it's time to continue with our simulation. And this is done by going to the simulation environment. Now I want you to show you an overview of the environment and then talk about the flow sheet. Okay, so let's go right here. In order to go to the simulation environment, remember that you gotta go to this part right here. And you can see we have much more menus and each menu has a lot of options. Make no worries, you will be learning one by one. The important part right here is to know where are the basic things, okay? So remember, this is the navigation pane. This is the flow sheet, this right here. You can zoom in, zoom out. We got the model plot for unit operations or blocks. Not all of these are actual unit operations. We're going, to, we're going to get to that later. We got this, which is the famous next button. Whenever you have doubt, just click here and Aspen Plus will tell you what's next. And as stated by Aspen Plus, the first step in the flow sheet simulation is to define your process flow sheet connectivity by placing your unit operation and connecting streams. Talking about streams, we have several types of streams. The most common one will be material stream. Just click here, through here, and let's call these stream one. Or you can use it inlet, or you can name it feed. We also have heat, just in case, probably you're wondering why heat. I don't know, maybe you want to model the sun heat. So this is sunlight. You can add that as heat, or maybe you have a external source, or maybe backwards, you are modeling something that is taking away heat, for instance, a cooler or a chiller, you can do that as well. And we have work. Many times you want to know directly how much work is using, or maybe you are taking away work from a unit operation, let it be a turbine, and you want to see if that work flow will be enough for maybe gener generation of electricity. You can do that as well. Now a little bit on the flow sheet manipulation. Left click will be selecting, grabbing. Right click will select this menu. You can always zoom in, zoom out and so on. If you select this stream, you can rename it, you can change it. More importantly, you can add color and style. I don't know, maybe you know this is the feed. Maybe add this one. Because this is a main stream, you may want to add weight. So it looks kind of awesome. If you don't like it, you can keep adding colors. Also, I don't know, maybe you know that you're using service air. So let's this air. And let's say you want to add service air. And you know that this is not that important. So you can change that, let's say, to this part right here, and this is blue, that will be fine. So that's very awesome. Actually, I will definitely recommend you to, whenever you do your simulations, uh, add format to it. I have a course dedicated for formatting on this in the intermediate course. We're going to see much more. Actually, you can do even figures and so on at timestamps, titles, and so on. But right now, let's stick to the menus. Always try to be in home and in the main flow sheet. As you can see here, this is pretty similar to a Explorer or to maybe to Chrome, in which you're going to have several tabs right here, depending on the forms you start opening. Also, if you want to work with economics, that will be one of the last parts, which is adding money to the environment. If you're talking about batch system dynamics, we're not going to see that. That is on steady state. Plant data, equation oriented. If you want to view maybe the model palette, maybe no, take it away. If you want to see the flow sheet or whenever you're opening, here it goes, new tab, and you don't know where you are, you just go click here, view, flow sheet. If you want to find an object, right now we only have one object, but imagine having a plant with 100 streams well then you will find it very useful and so on we have more of this modify 
you want to connect, reconnect, we're going to see that later on. So you can also rotate units. Let me add you this drum just for the sake. Now what I want you to select is here. You can move the selection. You can change the icon if you don't like it. You can keep changing it. Eventually goes back to the same. Also, if you want to reconnect this connect source or destination, you can do it right now. Also, again, guys, it seems very easy, but remember, let's say that you have several streams, you select the correct one and you want to reconnect the source or the destination. It is much easier to do it here than actually try moving it and disconnect it and reconnect it because they will be creating a lot of chaos. And as you can see here, guys, the flow sheet must be always specified. When you add streams, they must be specified as well. And when you add blocks, they will be required to be specified as well. So let's click here. And just for the sake of seeing what's next, let's see what happens. I love it that Aspen will always tell you what is required. So for instance, we need to complete the drum block. We need to add an inlet and outlet and so on. So this is in general the flow sheet which is present in the simulation environment and make no worries if you need to add something in the physical property environment if you want to change the method name or maybe you forgot to add a component you can do it here and go back to the simulation environment.